und da kann Farbe gesagt, dass sie auch bestanden bist. Oh, Halleluja! Glory to God. Ah. Glory. Glorious, hallelujah. Is God good? Oh, snap, yes. <laughs> you know, when you begin to worship and press in, and his presence, you know, the word says, he says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And as you begin to press in more and you begin to dissolve yourself, you begin to disappear. And even though you're singing the music, you're not singing the music anymore. You're singing to him, but you're actually not even singing to him. You're just expressing him. See, this is when, the, when, you, when you get to this place, the Lord shows up and comes and hugs you. And you just, eh. And his presence and love just radiates through you. And you know what he says to me? He said, tonight he said to me, when he came and hugged me, he said, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. Why? Because we draw him to us. Does everybody get it? Man, you get in that place of worship where he can't help himself but to come. Snap. Then you just want to sing, sing, sing. And you just want to die. Amen. And you just want to go home. It's enough of this place. Amen. But while we're here. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Man, I just wanted to keep going. Whew. See, but you got to get beyond that boundary. There's three dimensions you bust through. Me, myself, and I. It's not how you feel. It's not about anything. I, I don't understand. How can we... It, when Jesus walks in, nobody sits. <laughs> He's the chief and commander. People have no idea how they disrespect his presence. That's why some people don't get it. They're too busy twiddling their thumbs or busy with their own stuff. and They can't let go. They're too busy because they're looking at themselves and how they feel. Never can press into that place. But man, when you do, you can't help. You can't help but say, come. I'm going after you. I'm going after you. See, he loves it when we are going after him. Does everybody understand that? And if you're not one who's going after him, then you're not a seeker. And you will miss See, there's a battle going on, amen? amen? Besides yourself. Hallelujah. I got turbo on here. Move it down. Just a little bit. I don't need assistance in turning the pages. I can do that on my own. <laughs> in 1 Corinthians 15. I have a strange message for you tonight. It wouldn't be the first one, right? Okay. <laughs> Glory. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39. Yes. Everyone say, yes, Lord. That's what he's waiting for. Just say yes. See, the bumper stickers say, just say no. <laughs> but we say, just say yes to him. Amen. Amen. There's a battle over the earth, you know that? It's been going on for a long time. In verse 39, verse 15, 39. 
It says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men and another flesh of animals and another of fish and another of birds. There are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Does everybody get it? Celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. We are terrestrial. Amen? Humanites. And there are celestials, which are what we call angels and things that add to Greek. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. I want you to understand he's giving us a parallel, which is called a parable. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Now, wait a minute. The resurrection of the dead is called eternal. So he just gave us two, three types. They're celestial, terrestrial, and eternal. Amen? It says, verse 42, So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. So we see here that it's sown, it's uh, raised in incorruption. Amen. It's raised in glory and it's raised in power. It was, it is sown on a nat natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. That word spiritual means eternal here. Eternal body. In other words, you and I are actually, we've been redeemed, now we're waiting for the fullness of our redemption called a glorified body. Amen? There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was the, of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. In other words, his body was not made from dust. It was made from the Word. Amen? The Word became flesh, not dust. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as the heavenly man, so also are the, what we call the eternal man, so also are those who are eternal. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the eternal man. Does everybody get it? So we're talking about three types, celestial, terrestrial, and eternal. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So he's telling us that there's a difference between those who are eternal, those who are celestial, and those who are terrestrial. Amen? Now when they call extraterrestrial, it's just a humanoid body from another solar system. Does everybody understand? That's what they call extraterrestrial. Verse 51, Beloved, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. In other words, the feast of trumpets. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And there's no coincidence we have a president called Trump. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, which is called the presence of evil. And the strength of sin is the law, because the law exposed sin. 
But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast. In other words, consistent, immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, always abounding in the cooperation with the Lord. Does everybody get it? Too many people think that this is works. It's cooperation. Cooperation brings what? Works. Amen. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we have celestial, terrestrial, and eternal. And they will all soon collide. There is a, we are on a collision course. Remember the eternal man is called, uh, the heavenly man is called the eternal man. Everything is going to come. There's a collision course we're getting ready to go into. Why? Because the battle is over the earth. 2 Timothy 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really didn't know what to call this teaching. So I'm just going to call it battle over the earth. <laughs> Or you can call it anything you want. <laughs> but for people to access the eternal library and find out what it is, it's called the battle over the earth. Second Timothy chapter 3 in verse 1. Not like, I mean, we've heard this multiple times, right? But here we are. Remember, we're, there's this celestial, terrestrial, and eternal battle going on. And it's going to all come to a, a head and a top. And it's going to battle. And it's going to be over this location. See, the earth is actually the center of the universe. In verse 1, let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. We know that we're in the last days because perilous times are here. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households, ministries, and so forth, and make captives of gullible men and women, Loaded down with sins, led away with various laws. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now Jam, James and Jambres resisted Moses so that these also resist the what? The truth. Men of what? Corrupt minds. Disapproved concerning the faith. Now I want you to grab hold of something. You know, the word says that anything's not a faith is sin. Faith is your connection. So if we lack in those things, we are considered corrupt mind. Corrupt mind. In other words, corrupt thoughts. Corrupt thoughts. I call them warped. Verse 9. But they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch, at Ikeum and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So, praise God. Don't whine and grumble and complain about it when you're being persecuted. Because most people whine and grumble and complain about it because they bring it on themselves. But evil men, this is the kicker right here, but evil men and imposters will grow what? Worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, the evil individuals, now I want you to know something, that he's not just talking about humanoids. 
He's talking about evil individuals, celestial and terrestrial. Amen? These will be imposters who will grow worse and worse. Why? Because without the scriptures, they cannot follow. Amen? They will escalate in violence, lies, false doctrines, false agendas, false religions. You'll see all kinds of things. Lies, false websites, false media, false teachers, all promoting anti-Christ. Everything is against anti-Christ. Now, when I speak about anti-Christ, it's how Christ's character is. See, people don't even know that they're associated with anti-Christ spirit if they're not conducting themselves in the manner of Christ-like character. Then there's an involvement of anti-Christ. Because, see, all of these people that we just mentioned, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unloving, unforgiving, without self-control, brutal despisers, traitor, headstrong, haughty, love, these are all influenced by anti-Christ spirits. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must what? Continue. Steadfast. Be disciplined. In the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now, childhood is also associated after you've been born again. Everybody get it? Because when you and I were born again, we were childlike. Amen? We were still in conversion stage. <clears throat> but you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood, from the moment you were born again, you are to know the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make your, you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Anything that is not righteous is lawless. If there's not producing righteousness, it's lawlessness. That the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Wow. Every good work. In Matthew 24... Matthew 24. We are getting closer and closer to where all of a sudden we will know that it's no longer time to go to work anymore. <laughs> Not in my house, my, my office though, right? You guys better show up. Because <laughs> we have work to do. <laughs> There's going to be a moment in time when we're just going to know it'll be a, like a, the Lord's just going to hit the button from his throne. Bee! All right, everybody get ready. Just like when Jesus showed up and the guys were out there fishing. What do you say, follow me? What did they do? They dropped everything and followed them. They dropped their income. <laughs> they dropped their understanding. <laughs> They dropped, left their families. They did everything because they knew there was a presence there that was different than anything on this earth. And when that presence touched them, even his presence alone, touched them by him just walking, seeing him, touched presence, they realized that this place it's nothing compared to whatever is waiting for them. There's another place for them that they couldn't even understand. Hey, these were not Bible thumpers. Remember that. Amen. They didn't know anything. I mean, one was, remember, a tax collector. Hello? <laughs> Praise God. Matthew 24, verse 3. And Jesus answered and said, did I say, for, oh, verse 3. <laughs> now as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said, take heed that no one does what? 
Oh, there's going to be great deception. It's already happening now. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Many will come, celestial, terrestrial, and extraterrestrial will come. Does everybody understand this? This is reality. And I will hear of war, and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places, which we know have already been going on. Then they will deliver you up for tribulation. Oh, uh, these are, oh, I'm sorry. And all these are the beginning of what? Sorrows, which we are almost done with. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. Now see, tribulation isn't going to come the way we've been expecting it. It is going to come subtle. Very, very subtle. It will be difficult to even realize you, you've entered it. Does everybody understand that? The way you and I will know it is there will be a seven-year treaty signed. But the world won't know it. There'll still be prosperity. There'll still be things going on. But behind closed doors, there'll be a great persecution against Christians and Jews. The news media will not tell you the truth. Radio stations, they will be cutting off, slowly cutting off all Christian stuff, that, uh, any communication, which has already started. Amen? It's already started. Anything associated with conservative beliefs, they'll begin to shut down, which has already started. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Hatred for Christians and Jews is escalating incredibly. It's amazing how many antichrist spirits we have in our own government. Phenomenal Congress and senators who hate Jews and hate Christians. And they want to take down this country because it represents Christ. So they're against United States and Israel because there's a unity between United States and Israel. One is associated with Moses, and the other one is associated with Elijah. And then many will be offended, verse 10, will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Again, there will be false prophets from celestial, terrestrial, and extraterrestrial. And because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. In other words, our hearts will be hardened. But he who endures to the end and is not deceived will be saved. And this gospel, the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Here we see the love of many will grow cold. Cold. In Matthew 7, Why are we talking about this? Because Holy Spirit knows what's getting ready to be released. And he doesn't want his people to be deceived. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter by the what? Narrow, Narrow gate. For wide is the gate... And broad is the way that leads to what? Oh, there's going to be many false gates coming. And there are many who go into it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the what? Way which leads to life. There are few who find it. Beware of what? 
false prophets who will come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree that bears fruit, but a bad tree bears what? Bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. So who not, whoever does not practice righteousness is considered practicing lawlessness. Now you got to understand what righteousness is. Righteousness is cooperating with the character of Christ in every area. People don't get this. There whoever, therefore, who, and he explains it right here. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, whoever hears them and does them, I will liken him a wise man who built his house on the rock, which is the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the anointing or the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like in a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. False prophets, individuals with a message of false hope, lying promises. Again, they will come from all areas, celestial, terrestrial, so forth, to mislead the eternal ones already set forth eternity or those who are being converted to eternity. Does everybody understand that? Again, lawlessness, what is it? It's any association with sin, motive, attitude, bitterness, rebellion, pridefulness, unforgiveness, offense, reactions of disrespect, ungrateful, unthankful, selfishness, self-righteous, and disobedient to the scriptures. This is all considered lawlessness. It is not righteousness. You want me to say that again? I thought so. What is lawlessness? It's any association with sin or the presence of evil, which affects a person's motive, attitude, resulting in bitterness, rebellion, Any association with the presence of darkness or sin? With motive, attitude? Bitterness, rebellion, pride? Unforgiveness? Offense? Reactions of disrespect, ungrateful, unthankful, selfishness, self-righteous, and disobedient to the scriptures. It's all considered lawlessness. You know, the Lord really checks us in every area. Amen? He says, come and learn from me. Amen? Learn from me. Learn from me. So when, when an individual stops learning, amen, the end result is lawlessness. Why? Because there's non-submission. And so then they can't submit to God or they refuse to submit to God and they can't resist the devil. 
So they're led by how they feel, what they think, their past, all of these other foolish things. In 2 Peter chapter 2. Glory. For verse 1, For there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Wow. He talks again about false prophets, teachers. Many will follow their hypnotic mind control ways with fruits of hatred, violence, perverse tongue, an antichrist character. Because the only way of escape is in Christ. That's it. That's it. That's why they are antichrist, because they're trying to prevent individuals from eternity. Does everybody get this? They're trying to stop them from entering an eternal life, because they can't enter it themselves. Oh, hallelujah. Titus 3. Titus 3 and verse 8. He said, this is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm when? Constantly, not when you feel like it. Affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful. Everyone say careful. careful. To maintain good cooperation. <laughs> these things are good and profitable to men, but avoid foolish what? Disputes. Genealogies, contentions, strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the devices, man or woman, after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is what? Warped. Warped in what? Sinning. Why? Because they're not practicing righteousness, they're practicing what? Lawlessness. Being self-condemned. Wow. In other words, they're bringing con condemnation on themselves. War person is a so-called Christian has allowed bitterness, unforgiveness, offense to blind them from the true love of God Amen. and to love his children. Captivate with worldly vanity and self, unaware of evil control in their own life. That's a warped person. First John chapter four. Again, they don't even recognize they've been taken captive by evil forces. Well, that's Satan's greatest weapon, right? Deception. Again, how would you know it if you're not looking for conviction? So you want to convict everyone else but yourself. First John chapter 4 and verse 1. 
Beloved, do not believe every Christian. Oh, every spirit. But test them whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Even every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of anti-Christ. Now many will say that they've come of God. For God. That we have a sweet, Doctrine of deception. Hmm. Which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. But you better have communication with he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. But if you can't look for com uh, conviction, receive conviction, is there really communication then? No. It says, verse 5, they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. They act as the world, and the world hears them and approves of them. We are of God. We who know, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. In this the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him or through his character. Does everybody get that? that we might live through his character. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Wow. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him. And he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Powerful. The world will hear them, believe them, and follow them as they begin to appear more. Whether they're celestial, terrestrial, whatever. These are false doctrines of demons. And the word tells us that many will fall from the faith from deceiving and seducing doctrines and demons. It is happening. It's creeping in bit by bit by bit. Again, it's subtle. Many people are not even aware of it. Many people are not even aware that they've already been taken captive. Many people have walked away already from their calling and purpose and destiny. And not even know it. In First Peter chapter five. Oh, praise God. It's like who told them that? <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you. Be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, and cancel your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be what? Sober. Sober. 
Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, in your connection, in your relationship. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody gets tempted by this. But may the God of all grace who called us to his who what? Eternal glory because we are eternal lights now. By Christ Jesus, after you have suffered, after you have what? Suffered. After you have been challenged, after you have been gone through chastening, after you have been persecuted, after you realize you did something stupid. Amen? After you realize whatever. Hallelujah. God will what? He'll perfect you, establish and strengthen you, and settle you as long as you what? Maintain connection and follow. Amen? Maintain connection and follow. Again, humbleness or what we call humility. Humble and humility are deniers of self. They are deniers of self. If you can't humble yourself, then you're not a denier of self. And you are practicing lawlessness. Because that's why God resists the what? Proud. What is proud? It's practicing lawlessness. It is not practicing righteousness. So if you're not expressing the character of Christ, then you are practicing lawlessness. Humility is the key to receive and stay connected. Why? Because if you're not in humility, then you're not a denier of self. If you're not a humble. Humility is the key to receive, stay connected, and consistent. One of the things we're looking for in every area of our life is that we are consistent in the expressing the character of Christ. So that we may be alert to his love all the time. His love all the time. Not soulish love. Hello? This is the love of God, which is his presence. Humility is highly effective in the kingdom of Christ, to be humble. Now, there's false humility. Amen? I've seen a lot of monks in false humility. False humility, what I call now today, is a sheep in wolf's clothing. They have a form of godliness but deny the power. They have a false humility. Why? Because their inwardness is wicked, prideful, arrogant. They are... Uh, they approve of the things that are not right, but inwardly justify themselves in reasons and decisions and actions that displease God. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. If there's not a fruit of humility, submission, then there's a fruit of pride, and that is lawlessness, and that is influence, and that person is being taken captive. Some people won't realize that they've been taken captive their whole life until they get home, even if they're a Christian. John 10. John 10. Remember, there's a battle over this earth. And we are on the battlefield. The problem is, is the battlefield for me and you is in our minds. But we are on the battlefield, the earth. But we have a spiritual battle, don't we? That's how we overcome. Of course, if you're not in a battle, you become a what? Casualty. casualty. And that's not casually. Verse 22. 
John 10, verse 22. Now was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem. And it was winter. And Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered him and said, I told you. And you don't believe that the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. But many people walk out of his hands. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. Wow. I and my Father are what? One. one. He said, my sheep hear. In other words, they believe, they receive, and they execute. That's what hearing's all about. A person that listens doesn't do those things. They just go, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's a listener, not a hearer. My sheep hear, believe, and execute. They receive it, they believe it, they receive it, and they execute. In other words, they do it. They submit, they obey according to what God says. Not according to what their soul says. Not according to what their past says. Not according to what their offenses say. Amen. Amen. This is different. In Revelation 12. Jesus is tightening up his church. Revelation 12. And again, many will be, remember, we are already in the falling away. Amen? Things are going to get tighter where some people are just going to, they're going to either have to turn and do the right thing or going to run. Twelve thirteen. Revelation 12, 13. It says, Now when the dragon, what? Saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Now the woman here is associated with not only the body of Christ, but Israel, Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. And I want you to know that it says when he realized, in other words, he'd been cast to the earth and he became physical. Does everybody get this? But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for time, times, and half time, which is three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent. And I believe this will be the rapture. The serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And a dragon was enraged with the woman. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Believe me, they are keeping the commandments of God and now have the testimony of Jesus Christ because the rest of the body has been removed. They're not like, whoa! But I thought I, was, I thought I was doing the right things. No, only those that practice the character of Christ will be removed. There's going to be many people left behind who don't even know it because they are not expressing the character of Christ. Christ will take Christ. Everyone else will be left behind. Is everybody okay? Matthew 25. But I want to get this in. So bear with me. Oh, 
Oh, happy days. Matthew 25, 31. Matthew 25, 31, please. Is everybody there? Yeah. Oh, snap. Let's speak it. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all nations will be gathered together before him. And he will separate them one from the other as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Okay, so a sheep is considered submissive, a goat is rebellious. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. So you got righteousness and lawlessness. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him. Righteous. Why? Because he was expressing his character, his compassion. Amen? It wasn't about the works. It was about the compassion of Christ in an individual. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? This was humbleness. When do we see you stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when do we see you sick or in prison or come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to who? To me. Revelation 21. Utarabakia. Revelation 21. Glory. Is everybody there? Yes, sir. Use your pen for a second. Thank you. Thank you. Revelation 21, verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now you got to remember, heaven is representation of eternal. Remember, eternal will begin, is going to come and take over everything, celestial, terrestrial, everything. And those who are eternal will be here. So there's a battle over the earth because they know exactly what's going on. They know the scriptures. They are going to come in multiple different forms and ways to deceive people, to prevent them from becoming eternal. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with who? Men. So the eternal God Almighty, the created universes and everything else, is coming to dwell with mankind that he created, but these are eternals. Amen? He's not coming to dwell with celestials, terrestrials. He's coming to dwell with eternals. And there are going to be those who are celestial that will become eternal also. Does everybody understand that? Because we know that there's other celestials that are not going to become eternal. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Now is that intense or what? And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain from the former things have passed away. Then he, the who, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things what? New. 
You don't think that they want to take over this place? Oh, they don't want this change. They don't want this shift. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son and daughter. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Wow. And I want to close it, John 10. Whoa, yes. So in this collision, course that everything is it's here it's here it's happening there's things that are gonna look better get better but won't stay better and we'll be challenged on the character of Christ all the time John 10, verse 11. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling who he is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my sheep. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Oh, snap. that are not of this fold. In other words, dimensional, time. Them, I, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice from every dimension, from all creation, whatever it was. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Now, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received from my Father. The battle for the earth. Amen? We're about to hear and see a, all wild things getting ready to happen. Strap in, get some popcorn and watch the show. But make sure you're participating in the kingdom. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for preparing us, for warning us, and tightening us up. We thank you. We repent for anything we've done that has offended you and not a rebelled against your character in any way whatsoever. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you'll make us more sensitive in the area of what is righteousness and what is lawlessness. Help us to express you. And we repent for every area that we've not expressed you. A thought, word, deed, motive, attitude, and character. I ask for your blessing on your people that you'll seal your word and that it will grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise be to God.